Hi, this is Steve, V6WZ. Today I'd like to just briefly talk about the Omega Match for shunt feeding a tower. Uh, in a prior video I explained the uh, Gamma Match system uh, using a single gamma capa series Gamma capacitor. And I would say that if possible it's best to uh, always do it that way uh, by finding the 50 ohm point in your tower and then just tune out the inductive reactants uh, so that we're left with a pure 50 ohm resistance. You know it's simple and there's only one component. Uh, again this is uh, a chart from my prior video just showing the effect of moving the tap height, uh, the tap on the tower higher or lower and you know by just doing that we should be able to find the uh, 50 ohm point and I mean you know it can take a few iterations but uh, you know this is a, the, the preferred method because you know once you found that 50 ohm point gosh you know you just tune out the reactants and you're left with the 50 ohms. You know if, you, if, you're, if you're trying to gamma match and you find that you're not getting a one-to-one -one match well that's because your resistive uh, component there where the, where the shunt arm is isn't 50 ohms. But anyway uh, the Omega match uh, using the Omega match there is a way uh, to transform the resistive component to match our system uh, using a second capacitor. Uh, but I think it's really important that you understand that this will only work uh, when the resistive uh, component is less than 50 ohms. Uh, in other words the Omega cap can only increase the resistance it cannot lower uh, the R. So if the resistance is above 50 ohms, the omega system uh, won't work. Uh, the omega capacitor is inserted from the gamma wire to ground, uh, as shown here on the left is that you know the gamma assist, the gamma wire comes down through the series gamma capacitor, and the omega capacitor is from the shunt wire to ground. Uh, there's a detail here to uh, to the right uh, showing where that uh, omega cap is inserted. Uh, you know, adjusting the omega capacitor can be a little bit tricky. Uh, there's kind of an interplay between the gamma and the omega cap, and you know, there'd be numerous iterations and back and forth adjustments are needed. You know, I just use a SWR meter and some variable caps. It's I don't know, kind of like you know, your load and tune on an amplifier. It, it, it you know, a bit of back and forth before you'll get the one-to-one -one, uh, point. Uh, in terms of what you ought to expect for voltage ratings, I would suspect that you know, your your Voltage ratings ought to be similar to what you calculated uh, for the gamma cap. So uh, I myself use the uh, Omega system with my two element parasitic array because my tower is tuned uh, for omni uh, gamma only. In other words, I found the 50 ohm tap point on my tower and, uh, and I use just the gamma cap to uh, use it in omni. But I also, when I uh, introduce my parasitic elements, it uh, drops the real resistance dramatically. And uh, at, then what I do is I relay a switch in uh, an omega capacitor to match that low resistance to my 50 ohm uh, system. So it's a handy thing for me in this case to use an omega capacitor. Perhaps one other reason why you might use an omega match is if you've got a short tower which although it's short, it's maybe you have significant top loading such that it's still uh, inductive. Uh, and uh, therefore, you know, your gamma wire actually needs to be longer than the height of the tower. Okay, in other words, you can't get the, the gamma wire long enough to uh, to uh, get the right to, to find the 50 ohm point. And in a case like that, well, you know, the omega should help you. Though I would say at least maybe check first that maybe increasing the wire spacing can't get you uh, closer to uh, a 50 ohm point. Anyway, there you go. Quick summary of the omega match and uh, what that's all about. 73, Steve, V6WZ.